My name is Tim Longo, and this is my story. God's always been a significant part of my life. However, there have been some rough times. There was a point in my life where I had to choose either strengthening my relationship with him or walking away from him. After high school, I started working with a youth group in Pico Rivera. Um, after about a year, I ended up taking over the youth group and ran the youth group for a couple of years. One day after a youth group event, the pastor brought me into his office. He and the elders acknowledged that they hadn't seen enough growth in the youth group and alluded to the fact that they wanted my resignation from the church. So I gave that to him. After my time in youth ministry, I had several opportunities to serve God. All of them ended in what I considered failure. I felt like I was listening to God all this time and doing exactly what he wanted me to do, but everything I was doing was falling apart. And because of that, I let down my guard and I got in kind of a dangerous area where I was still a Christian. I still acknowledged that I loved Jesus, but he wasn't guiding my life. This led to the darkest time in my spiritual life. I came to a point where I realized I couldn't play this game anymore. I couldn't pretend like I was a Christian, and I didn't want to anymore. I grew tired of it. So I just prayed and said, God, if you're there and you really want me to be part of your life, then make it really easy. About two weeks later, I got a call from a friend of mine from high school who had become a pastor. He said he was starting a new ministry and he wanted me to be part of it. He said he'd been praying and God laid on his heart that I needed to be part of this ministry. At that point, I knew God was speaking to me. So I said, all right, let's give it a shot. The ministry, didn't succeed in the way we wanted it to, but it succeeded in the way that I knew God was there and that he wanted me as part of his family still. Two years ago, I had the privilege of going to Nicaragua with LBF. Um, before the trip was over, I was asked if I would lead next year's team to Nicaragua. It brought on a lot of doubt and apprehension and I was wondering if this would just be another failed attempt to serve God or if it was actually his calling. So I took some time to think about it and pray about it. And I hesitantly accepted to do this. The team that I was blessed with was amazing. I really believe God handpicked every one of them because we all gelled together um, and God did some amazing things through us. I started to realize that maybe some of the times that I was counting as failures were not, that God was actually working through me, uh, but he just wanted me to move on and do something different. About a month ago, I began working with the high school group at LBF. I felt like God had really put me back where he wanted me. I really felt for the first time in years that this is exactly where I should be. I kind of liken my faith to a parent holding their child. Sometimes the child wiggles around and wants to get down and the parent will let him get down and sometimes the kid will make mistakes. And I kind of feel like that's the way my life was when I was away from Christ. I feel like I was making mistakes but I knew he was right there to pick me up if I needed him. Because of Jesus, I'm chosen. I realized with all the doubt and beating myself up over the failures in my life, I realized that God chose me in his family. And I can't take that lightly. If I'm listening to him and I'm doing what he wants me to do, it's not a failure. So following Jesus and allowing him to lead your life isn't always easy, right? As I hear Tim's story, that's what I hear. 
that's what I hear is that there is no promise that things are just going to go the way you want them to just because you believe in God. And there may be some difficult, some difficult places. I, it's, it's amazing that, as I heard that, and, and I've, I've heard this several times, that one of the darkest periods, one of the darkest spiritual periods of his life was involving ministry. It's like, wait a minute, that's not supposed, isn't, I love Jesus, right? That's supposed to make everything better. And yet, where his heart was at was going, you know what? I'm going to pursue him. I'm going to see what he has for me. And it may not always make sense to me. It may not always be comfortable. But I know there's life in it. And so we're in this series called Real Life Stories where we are sharing our stories. Last week, you guys heard uh, some of the leaders and the stories that they're on. And I'm pretty sure that in every testimony you heard last week, there was some sense of failure or there was some sense of not knowing what God was doing, or trying to pursue God. And that's why it's a real life story. We live in a broken world. We live in, in situations where we do fail, where we're not perfect, and we have to receive the grace of God. But what are you going to do with that story? Because guess what? Right now, God is still writing your story. God, you are living out the story that God is giving you. And how is that going to be lived out in your life? What is that going to look like in the future? What are you going to take these years of your life and share about God and what he was doing now when you're older? And we are called to declare our faith in, God, in Jesus. We are called to talk about our relationship with him. It's always easier to sit back and do what? Nothing. It's always easier to do nothing. But that's not what we're supposed to do. If you, uh, if you brought your Bible tonight, raise it up in the air. We're going to use them, okay? I need, I need some people, if you brought your Bible, I need somebody to look up Matthew 10.32. Who will look that up? Matthew 10.32? Okay, Anaya. I need somebody else to look up Acts 1.8. Nicole. Um, I need somebody to look up Romans 10.9. Ryan. And I need somebody to look up 1 Peter 3.15. Corey. All right. So look those up. And then if you would, stand up. And I want you to read these out loud. And I want you to listen to what this has to say, what God has to say about the importance of us telling our story. About our faith. About our walk. Even when there's failure in our faith. Even when we don't do it perfectly, um, listen to what, what God says to us about the importance of telling our stories. Who had Matthew 10.32? Okay, Anaya. Will you read that? Who, oh. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. This is Jesus talking, right? Whoever acknowledges me, acknowledges me before other people, I'll acknowledge them before God. But if you sit back and you go, eh, no, no, I'll just keep going to youth group. It's not important that people know what I believe. There's an, that is denying your relationship with God. And what Jesus says is goes, that means there is no relationship. It means you're just going through the motions. We are supposed to confess our faith in Jesus. Who has Acts 1.8? Nicole. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's not just about you and maybe even just you and the person next to you going, you're a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. You're a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. But that we would understand that if we are following Jesus, just like it happened with Tim, God is going to use you in all kinds of ways. Maybe it's in a youth group over here. Maybe it's in a church over here. Maybe it's with your buddy. Maybe it's, it's on your team. That we are to be witnesses of who God is and what he's doing in our hearts. 
to people all around. And God will do that in us. Who has Romans 10, 9? Okay. If you confess with... Whoa. If you... <laughs> If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the grave, you'll be saved. If you confess with what? Your mouth. <laughs> if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Okay. We miss this. We, there are all kinds of people, some maybe in this room, who think that a relationship with, with God means that, well, I believe in God. I just, I believe it. You know who else believes in God? The devil. If you confess with your mouth, it is important that we speak of our faith. It's important that we let people know. One of the ways we do that is telling our stories. Another way we do that is baptism. These are two key ways that we confess our relationship and our faith in Jesus. Who had 1 Peter 3.15? Corey. But sanctify... Ooh. Yeah, sorry. Uh. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Thanks. Always be ready to give a defense. Because guess what? When you start to speak of your faith, people are going to question your faith. When you start to speak of your belief in Jesus, when you start to stand around a flagpole and pray with other Christians, People are going to go, hey, what's that about? And we are not called to go, oh, no, 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 nothing. Don't worry about it. Mind your own business. We are called to give a defense. We are called to say, you know what? This is what I believe. This is who I know the truth to be. And we're called to speak it out. Tonight, we're going to continue with our life stories. And each detour group is going to have one or two people who are going to share their life story. And... I first of all want to thank each of you who are, who are going to share tonight and say good job. I know, yeah. This isn't easy for everybody. Some people it's like, ah, no problem. Other people, this is, there's a lot of overcoming that's going to happen tonight. And so I want to ask each one of you who are here tonight to please be respectful of the people who are sharing. Um, that we, we don't talk while they're trying to share. We don't laugh at inappropriate times. Um, there will be the opportunity when someone's done sharing, if you have a question about something they shared, uh, that you can ask. If they don't want to answer that question, they don't have to. There will also be the opportunity when we're done sharing for you to write an encouragement card uh, back to that person. We'll hand them out, and it's basically letting them know, hey, this is what I learned about you. And this is something that really spoke to me. Because we want to be able to let people know how God is using their story in the lives of other people. So I want to ask you to please be encouraging in those things. Because I know God is using... I've already talked to some of you who heard your leader's story last year. And they're like, man, that really helped me have a lot more understanding of how God works in a certain situation. Or I didn't know they went through that or whatever it may be.